First Church, it's Palm Sunday. Good morning. We may be separated, quarantined, sheltered in place, or just plain old hunkered down, but we can still gather as one to worship the Lord. We gather by way of social media as a way of telling the devil to get behind us, because our God is bigger than any crisis or panic. Our God stays with us. Our God is everlasting.
The scripture readings this morning are Psalm 118 and Matthew 21, verses 1 through 11. I'll be reading from the New International Version. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Let Israel say, his love endures forever. Open for me the gates of the righteous. I will enter and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord through which the righteous may enter. I will give thanks for you answered me. You have become my salvation. The stone builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The Lord has done this and it is marvelous in our eyes. The Lord has done it this very day. Let us rejoice today and be glad. Lord, save us. Lord, grant us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. From the house of the Lord we bless you. The Lord is God, and he has made his light shine on us. With bows in hand, join the festal procession up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will praise you. You are my God, I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. And now from Matthew. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethpage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there, with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, Say that the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to daughter Zion, See, your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went ahead and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt, and placed their cloaks on them for Jesus to sit on. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? The crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. The word of God for the people of God. It's been an interesting few weeks. We find ourselves in situations that we could have never imagined just a few months ago. We're finding out ways of surviving by being locked down, determining who's essential and who's non-essential in the workforce, learning to live with delivered groceries and takeout service. Communicating with our families by way of Facebook and telephone and whatever other ways we can find to keep in contact. In my own situation, my wife Kathy is locked down in North Carolina and I'm locked down here in West Virginia. That's been interesting in itself. But we're surviving, as all of you are, as we find that life will go on. And we will survive this crisis and we will find that later in our life, this is another one of those stories that we'll be telling our grandchildren and great-grandchildren and they'll just look very puzzled at us as we do. But for now, I need a parade. There were no St. Patrick's Day parades. There was no green beer, shamrocks, costumes. There wasn't anything that was green. There was no April Fool's Day jokes. 
nobody was really in the mood. And here I am today, and I have a bundle of palm strips on the altar. There's one there for every one of you that are watching with us today on Facebook. If it was normal Palm Sunday, we would see our children marching down the aisles, waving the palm trees, and when we weren't looking, pretending that they were limp swords with each other. I need a parade. I need to see smiling faces, to hear laughter, to watch the floats and the bands go by. I long to see twirlette groups and scouts, fire trucks, police cars, and veterans on floats, and yes, even politicians. I need a parade. For the first time in my life, I feel that I know the anticipation, the desire, and the want that was in the hearts of the people of Jerusalem on that triumphal entrance of Jesus on that very first Palm Sunday. I, indeed we, need a parade. Palm Sunday is described by Matthew who clearly sees in this an event of fulfillment of prophecy and an echo of Zechariah's proclamation of God as the king of peace and victory restoring Israel to a position of prominence. This event lifts all the people of God, even those that don't really realize it. Matthew points out that not everybody was on the bandwagon. Oh, there was a crowd, yes, but the whole city was in turmoil. They were asking, who is this? And even the crowds call him the prophet who comes from Galilee, not the promised Messiah or the king that such a ritual would announce. Yes, son of David is a kingly designation, but apparently not a convincing one, or at least according to Matthew. It isn't Matthew, but Luke, who includes the words from the cross, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. But Matthew implies that the crowd here doesn't know what they are doing. Yet they shout it, and Matthew claims it, Hosanna, which translates as save us. Now, some historians argue by this time Hosanna was merely a greeting, a salutation for those in power, and that the translation no longer held the meaning for those that lined the streets that day. Well, perhaps that is true. And yet, here again, it's appropriate shout to make to the one who rode into the city that day. They shouted more truth than they knew. I need that parade. Preparations had been made for this event. Sending the disciples into the village to retrieve the donkey and the coat was not necessarily a supernatural event, but the result of a planned approach. Jesus was making his declaration to the city of Jerusalem, a final attempt to win their hearts to his mission and ministry. And in the moment, those who shout Hosanna seem to have grasped some thread of truth of the moment. How deeply they have grasped that truth is debatable, given how quickly the crowd turns on him during this week. Jesus makes his declaration in a specific, recognizable way. By choosing the donkey as a means of conveyance, he declares himself to be a king of peace. Now, he could have chosen a white charger, a war horse for a conquering warrior king, but instead he chose a donkey and a coat to trot alongside as signs of vulnerability and peacefulness. Matthew's message is that this wasn't an accident, not a happenstance on the road to Jerusalem one sunny day. Instead, it was a declaration then and now, and an invitation 
to pledge allegiance to the King of Peace. I need a parade. Ride on, King Jesus. No man can hinder me. Ride on, King Jesus. No man can hinder me. In that great getting up morning, fare thee well, fare thee well. In that great getting up morning, fare thee well, fare thee well. Is that particularly a song about entering heaven? Yes, but it's also about heaven on earth, a new kingdom brought in by a king who rides in. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. It is about this day, redeemed by one who rides the dusty streets of Jerusalem, cheered by a crowd in celebration and affirmation. I need a parade. Yet, there are some seeds of discontent, of the tragedy that is to come in our passion story. Even in this glorious hymn of thanksgiving and victory, the stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. The one acclaimed has been rejected. And we will move all too quickly from shouting, Hosanna! To crucify him. You cannot find yourself getting from Palm Sunday to Easter without a cross. As we continue our self imposed exile, let us find the true saving in the shadow of the cross. Amen. wish to take this time to thank all of you that are watching by way of Facebook or listening on your phones, and to thank you for the continued support that you have been giving us here at First Church as we continue to go about our weekly ministry in the best ways that we know how. We may not be meeting face-to-face -face in worship on Sunday morning, but we continue to be available in prayer, in counseling, in giving hope, in running errands and delivering food or medicine, in any way that we can be of assistance to the community around us. You have kept us in your prayers, in your thoughts, and in your financial giving. For that, we are grateful. We ask that you continue to do so until such a time that we will be face to face once again we are continuing to set up new methods of being able to contribute to the church, and we'll give you details on those as soon as they are available. But for now, we may use the mail system. Your address, of course, to the church is 905 Glendale Avenue, South Charleston, West Virginia, or you can drop it off here at the office. We have proper precautions for taking that, and Linda is maintaining a small schedule because of the work that we have to do she is available Monday through Wednesday now, so if you need to come by, come, bang on the door, and we'll make an approach and do what we need to. Normally on first Sunday, we gather together and celebrate Holy Communion. We're not able to do that by way of Facebook. But we are able to celebrate a remembrance of Holy Communion since we are not in community. We are not in corporate worship. But I have asked each of you, if you would, to have a piece of bread and a glass of water or any other liquid that you'd care to have. Here at the church, if you have a glance at our altar, you'll see that I have on the table our communion tools. I have a chalice that has water in it. I have a plate that has a hamburger bun on it. To me, a hamburger bun is probably one of the most recognizable pieces of bread that we have in the United States, with probably more of that consumed every day than anything else. Would you be in an attitude of worship as you hear these scriptures? I, therefore the prisoner of the Lord, 
beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of us all, who is above all, through all, and in all. These are the words of Paul to the church at Ephesia. We celebrate what some would call the agape feast or the love feast. Here before us, you will find some water and bread. And it is important to know that this feast is not a Eucharist feast. Let us commemorate our unity through Christ and feast on the spirit of love who is Christ. I need you and you need me. We're all a part of God's body. Stand with me, agree with me. We're all part of God's body. It is God's will that every need be supplied. You are important to me. I need you to survive. You are important to me, and I need you to survive. I pray for you. You pray for me. I love you. I need you to survive. I won't harm you with words from my mouth. I love you. I need you to survive. I need you to survive. It is God's will that every need be supplied. You are important to me. I need you to survive. You are important to me. I need you to survive. We need one another to survive as God has intended us to survive. Perhaps this time of coming together in the Agape Feast is a way of drawing our attention back to the needs of community, to the needs of human touch, to the needs of being able to see each other's faces, to see twinkle in the eyes, laughter in the voice, and to feel the warmth of a human touch and a hug of sympathy and compassion. We use the elements of bread and liquid water, juice, milk, whatever you've chosen, as a ways to symbolize that together we are one in the body of Christ. We are one in purpose. We are one in compassion. We are one in deed. We need each other. We need to be a community that is active in all that we do. Take this moment of silence. Look upon the bread and the water. And remember your time of community and holy communion in the family of First United Methodist Church. One thing we can do together is pray together. I'd like to share with you some of our prayer requests that we have received via email. Teresa Matheny is asking for prayers for her mother's cousin, John Davis, whose home recently burned down. He is currently staying with Jody. A prayer request for the mother, grandmother of Jerry Buckley, Glenna Jennings, who has been given a short few weeks to live. And please continue to pray for the entire Buckley family. 
Please keep Jeannie Murphy in your prayers as she continues her recovery from a heart catheterization and also a stent. Please remember 92-year-old Arthur Pauley, who was at CAMC for treatment of pneumonia and AFib. No visitors are allowed, and it's tough for him and everyone who has to be alone in the hospital wondering why their children are not there. A request from Carrie Hamilton for prayers for her friend Heather, Heather Kasdorf. Continued prayers for Dawn Wells and her father, who will be having a procedure done soon. Continued prayers for Megan Young, whose friend Lindsay Barr and her two little boys are dealing with the death of her husband, Scott, who passed away after losing a battle with cancer. Continue to pray for Jerry Witten and her family as her brother George has passed away recently. Also, please continue to pray for George's wife, Wanda, and their five children. An update for my sister, Jeannie, and her husband, Joe. They continue to recover after testing positive for the coronavirus. And there are other emailed requests for prayer, and Pastor Paul has attended to all of those requests. To the many of you that have responded to the various emails that have gone out, I have been very touched by the replies that I am receiving. Your requests for prayers have been heard and prayed for on a daily basis. And I especially give thanks to the many of you that ask how you could pray for myself and Kathy during this time frame. Please understand that we are well. We are separated, but we are well. And I guess that didn't come out quite exactly right. But uh, we are in two different states right now, but we are coping and we are doing what we can in the way of ministering to our congregation. Let us pray. Father, worry and fear are not of your heart. 1 John 4 reminds us that perfect love casts out all fear, and we pray your perfect love upon the hearts of all of those who are burdened with fears of this virus. Lord, we know with no doubt that you are bigger than the threat of anything, especially illnesses. Please comfort us who are living in fear, Please free us from the bondage that anxiety creates within. Remind us that you are still on the throne and that you are still in control. Fully rain down the serenity that comes only from the Prince of Peace. Help us who are living in unease to trust you in this time so that in times to come we may rest assured that you will be faithful to us, with us until the end of the age. We rest at the throne of the Almighty such fears and cast them upon you. For your burden is light and your yoke is easy. We know you cover us with your wings. Lord, hear the prayer of your people. Hear the names that we lift up in voice and in our hearts. Be with us through all that we will be facing in the next few weeks. Continue to give us strength, continue to allow us hope, and continue to answer our prayers as they come up daily. We ask all this in the name of Jesus Christ, the one who rode triumphantly into the city of Jerusalem with the crowd shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna to the King. Lord, in his precious name we pray. Amen. Your 
lift of love they crucified. They laughed and scorned him as he died. The humble king they named a fraud and sacrificed the Lamb of God. Lamb of God, sweet Lamb of God, I love the Holy Lamb of God. Oh, wash me in His precious blood, my Jesus Christ the So lost I should have died, but you have brought me to your side to be led by your staff and rod and to be called a lamb of God. Lamb of God, sweet lamb of God, I love Even though we are apart, as I look out into the sanctuary, I see each and every one of your faces. I know where you sit. I know how you giggle. I know how you pray. I know you because God has given me the pleasure of calling you friends. Even in this difficult time, know that the love of Jesus Christ is passed among us. In all that we do, let our frustrations be few, our joys be many, and our laughter be loud. For this is a temporary situation, and we will survive. And we will find new ways coming out of this to do ministry, a new conviction of taking care of one another, a new purpose of reaching out to the stranger with the stories of Jesus Christ. We will emerge from this a stronger church than we have been. We will emerge from this united in the purpose that we were set forth to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. And we truly will be transforming our world as this epidemic ends. Now may the grace of God, the love of Jesus Christ, and the ever empowering of the Holy Spirit be with you and your family, whether together or apart, in all that we do, be in peace, for God's grace rests on you. <laughs>